Welcome everyone to our webinar. My name is Peter Haller, um, and our webinar title is for today uh, Transitioning to Agile in Safety Critical Device Development. And this is our agenda. So, uh, first of all, I will briefly introduce our company, Intel Software, and then we'll talk about the safety critical development in general and uh, what are the basic, uh, basic uh, and fundamentalities of the differences of the waterfall v, mod v model and Agile methodologies and then about uh, how to uh, transmit your uh, development in Agile in the search for critical development, and which will be followed by a live demonstration. Before we get started, uh, just a few words about the structure of our webinar. So uh, after the introductory uh, section, uh, we will have a short live demonstration, which also will be followed by a question and answer session at the end. And therefore, you find a questions panel on the right-hand side in the GoToMeeting panel. So during the webinar, if you got any questions, uh, I would like to ask you to type them in. And at the end, I will try to answer them all. Also know that the recording of this webinar will be available soon after this session on the inkland.com slash webinars. And also make sure once you are visiting our homepage, please check out our uh, upcoming webinars as well. And if you feel like you can sign up for those as well. And the next one is will be the new enhancements and improvements in the CodeBeamer 7.8 version. So let's get started. Uh, we are Inland Software and we were founded in 1998 and headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany. We also have an office in the Silicon Valley in California and we are in implementation partnership with Lufthansa Industry Solutions. And we are also have uh, other resellers in current Taiwan as well. We are the sole developers and vendors of CodeBeamer application lifecycle management solution with the components including the requirements management, software development management, quality assurance and test management, demand management, and IT operations. And we are also uh, scaled Agile partners, so we are making implementations for the scaled Agile framework terminology as well. Here in this slide, you see a bunch of our customers. So we are serving customers from various industries, from the automotive, high technology, defense, finance, and medical sectors. And uh, most of them are also have to comply with uh, re uh, regu regulatory standards, so therefore, we also help them uh, in this compliance. Uh, and as a first step, we also provide a template, uh, temp template project that will help you also get started with, uh, with your compliance. Also note here that could be more than a scalable solution. So uh, our customers are also, there are some who use it, using it for small instances, for small teams, for small groups with a few users, uh, and also our greatest customer, Lufthansa Systems where they have more than 5,000 users. So let's get started. Um, and this is basically just the principles of the safety critical development. And uh, the building of software is to be uh, used in a safety critical environment, especially for the uh, medical device industry, automotive aviation systems, or railway software, for example, is uh, different to the ordinary software development. As human lives may be dependent on these systems, it is imperative that they operate reliably without uh, the risk of malfunction over the extended periods of time or even under all possible circumstances at operating environment. So therefore, great emphasis is based on the managing the risks, controlling the processes, both of the development and the testing, and ensuring complete traceability and, uh, and uh, transparency throughout the entire life cycle. The enforcement of adequate development and testing processes is vital if you are aiming to achieve the compliance with relevant industry standards, guidelines, uh, or regulations. In addition to ensuring the use of compliant processes, uh, you have to prove this finding a way to show that your life cycle fits the requirements set forth by the regulations. To, ver to verify the adherence to these uh, rules and regulations, development companies have to document their compliance measures and processes and compile reports on, on them to facilitate the audit. So uh, before we jump into the uh, transition to Agile, I just would like to uh, set up the principles of the uh, two different terminologies. So the first waterfall methodology is a popular development model for software engineering, and it's in use since the 1960s for large scale project. And waterfall has a long delivery cycle and the separate testing phase and the requirements with no change. So also 
waterfall uh, model describes development method that has a linear and sequential design process. This transitional waterfall method treats analysis of the requirements, design implementation, verification, so as the maintenance. So, and here in this next slide, I would like to provide you an overview what is Agile and what are the uh, principles behind the Agile development. As per definition uh, from the AgileNutshell.com, Agile is a time box iterative approach to software delivery that builds software incre incrementally from the start of the project instead of trying to deliver it all, uh, all at once near, near the end. But the Agile approach can and is being applied more and more to development of products. It works by breaking projects into, uh, into little bits of user functionality called the user stories, par prioritizing them and then continuously delivering, delivering them in, in short two-week cycles called the iterations. User stories are features which the clients might one day like to see in their software. So therefore, the Agile Manifesto was created by a group of experienced people who just wanted to create a better method to create software. So these are the, uh, the following four, fundam four fundamental main concepts uh, in the Agile Manifesto. And the first one is the individuals and interactions uh, over processes and tools, the customer collaboration over the contract negotiation, working software over comprehensive documentation, and responding to change over a following plan our following plan. So, and basically, uh, the items on the right are from the uh, waterfall methodology. Um, and, the, and also there's one list uh, about the Agile movement is that the documentation is not required or not uh, useful. And this is true, true because one of the core values within the Agile manifesto is working software over comprehensive documentation. However, note the word over in the statement. Uh, this, the manifesto is not saying not, uh, not saying not to any kind of documentation. It's saying there's a preference for working software over documentation. The goal is to remove barriers and defects from the system and leave things that add value. If your organization is creating lengthy documents to produce any kind of products that you are still struggling to release them on time and also within your budget, then uh, ask, ask what if you'll take to drive value to the client. So also the Agile Manifesto focuses on self-organizing and self-correcting teams to drive quality and efficiency in the system. So this manifesto, uh, which was created by a group of people, is already part of their organization. And they say that the value uh, in, in the item on the left-hand side are much more than on the right-hand side. Basically, there are also values in the items on the right-hand side. But in order to reach uh, much more value, there's there is more need to put effort into key concepts to achieve these values. So instead of treating the fixed stages like uh, as they do in the waterfall, Agile people believe that the phases are continuous activities. So by doing them continuously, the quality improves uh, because testing starts from, uh, from the very first day and ensuring that bugs are found earlier in the process. In addition to that, changes also can be made after the initial planning phases and uh, the client uh, makes changes in the requirement, the program can be rewritten easily. So this is much closer relationship between the customer and also to the developer and your, uh, uh, and your team. And also the visibility is enhanced. The product itself is released, uh, released much faster. Risks uh, are reduced uh, because you are able to uh, get feedback early on and you can meet uh, your customer expectations. And here, um, just just about some also our input from from our experiences at the company. Uh, that a lot of companies working in in these uh, industries that are highly regulated by the standards and guidelines, so-called the safety critical industries from the medical, automotive, and avionics sectors, they still rely on the water for V model development method when creating software for their products. Uh, while this doesn't allow them to take advantage of more more the agile method. Uh, they choose to stick with these tried and tested methods because they 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 think they, uh, it helps them to these companies ensure that certain processes are always enforced, which is the key achieving compliance with the relevant standards. Process control is simply easier to do in a waterfall environment that they believe. However, adhering to these regulations of uh, industry standards can also be ensured in agile development. Adequate process control measures can be implemented just the same 
which is the best demonstrated by uh, by the FDA's endorsement of agile practices, which documentation was announced in 2013 in the states. If it can be used in medical software development, where rigorous uh, standards apply to various processes, agile is surely compatible with development in other regulated industries as well. So indeed, the, uh, that's the conclusion. More and more companies in various industry sectors are coming to uh, agile. Agile helps uh, teams uh, cut their cut their risks by working on smaller chunks of uh, of software at a time, reduce the time of development, and improve the quality of their software products. However, aligning agile techniques with the uh, with the requirements of relevant industry standards and regulations takes a bit effort. Therefore, if you are looking to adopt agile while maintaining the same uh, same control over your processes. Uh, that you had using waterfall, you will first need to map. You will need to first map your agile processes and the stipulations of the standard that apply to your industry or also to your product. So any inconsistencies between these two, we have to be addressed at the early stage of your planning your agile implementation. And at the end of uh, end of the product, this analysis is hugely, hugely important, and it's going to be a set of compliant processes that you will need to enforce throughout the development life cycle. Any deviation from, uh, from these will likely result in non-compliance or could increase the risk levels of your end product. So uh, this task that, uh, that is difficult enough, but there's even more to com compliance than this. So traceability down to the source code will have to be ensured and proven along the life cycle. The processes that have to uh, that you have set in, in in stone in the first step should have to achieve this, but uh, proving it means that all the links between all work items uh, needs to be recorded, documented, and also shown during the audits. So this is where you will realize the accurate application lifecycle management tools, such as the CodeBeamer application lifecycle management uh, solution, are simply necessary when it comes to implementing agile in safety critical development. The reason is pretty simple. Not only does using such solutions help enforce set processes through pre-configured workflows for each item, they can also automatically record all changes and generate documentation to help compliance audits. Agile favors working software over the comprehensive documentation, which is why it's uh, so much faster than waterfall, but regulators and safety critical sector, sector still, still require thorough and complete documentation, whatever development processes you decide to use. And uh, here the ALM tools look like the CodeBeamer, take the burden of the documentation of the shoulders of your team by automatically recording the a comprehensive change history on all artifacts and letting you customize reports that can be easily exported, taking care of your documentation without requiring manual efforts for your team. So this is uh, basically the end of the introduction session. And uh, before I jump into uh, the live demonstration and show you some uh, basic examples how we implemented co uh, complex processes, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. And the first one is that which tools are you using currently uh, to, to manage your, your development? And uh, your options are Microsoft Office, IBM, Jira, HP, or any other tools that you are using. <clears throat> I will be open for a few seconds. Thank you so much. And here's the next one, that uh, you are looking for a tool that you would like to manage uh, your requirements, testing entire development lifecycle, agile project, or multiple agile project with. I will also leave it open for a few seconds. Thank you so much. And here's our last question in this section: that what is the what uh, which software development methodology that you are currently using? And your options are Agile, Scrum, Waterfall, and Hybrid. We 
Okay, thank you for your uh, answers. And at this, at this part, I would like to jump into the code beamer. And right now, um, I will have this short demonstration in our medical template project where we have defined also regulatory compliant workflows. We got some demo content and also if you are interested and you are in the medical area, uh, we can send this template out to you, but we also provide templates for the avionics and also for the automotive industries as well. So the first thing is regarding the proper documentation. And uh, right now we are in the wiki section of this project where we have a proper description of this project where you can attach images. Uh, you can define, for example, an entire development plan, plan for one of your products. And here, uh, by the testing of your software, you can just browse amongst this specific uh, wiki pages by clicking on the different links. And this is the very first essential part that you need to define your processes first. Once you have uh, defined your processes, uh, the second uh, part is the configuration itself uh, of, the pro of these processes. And here you see uh, in this medical specific architecture, you see uh, we have uh, different uh, artifacts here on the left hand side as different work items, starting from the customer requirements to uh, system and software requirements. And I just would like to show one specific workflow of the system requirements. And uh, in the configuration itself of the system requirements, and this is where you have to specify different properties, uh, diff different set of uh, items of, of, your, uh, of your requirements, for example, in this case. So I just click on uh, this and on the right hand side, you see immediately the different properties. In the middle section, you see uh, all the description and attached images. So this is very important that in this way, we provide the collaboration for the teams. But once it gets to the process enforcement, I just go into the customization. And here I show the state transitions of this specific uh, requirement. So here you can see, this is the graphical visualization of the workflow itself. Uh, so starting from the, uh, from the status new, this has to go through uh, an approval process. So here you see once I scroll down to the bottom, uh, the last status is the obsolete status. But this is way uh, in using the uh, agile methodology, here we also enforce the processes with this uh, strong and uh, pretty powerful workflow engine. And here you can see you, uh, your users have no other options than start the development in the status new. Then you can create uh, immediately a draft status and you can further work on that. But either way, you will have to go through this, uh, this regulated approval process, which is FDA compliant. So all the users have to add their accurate signatures uh, which is in this specific case their password to log in into the tool. And the system will automatically generate uh, approval sub subtasks uh, for this uh, approval process. I just expand my view and here you can see uh, how this straight transition is triggered automatically by the tool. So here you can see up on the state transition from status draft, draft on from, from status new. The system will automatically generate a related approval tasks uh, to the assigned to users. And those users uh, either have to accept or reject their approval tasks. And whenever they uh, accept one specific task, uh, uh, approval task, uh, those will trigger a state transition back to the original requirement from the uh, status waiting for approval to the status accepted. But only, uh, so there's also one condition here uh, defined you, here you see all approved, and once I click on that, this is where you can see, for example, once I go into this specific guard and I show you the configuration itself, this shows you that it, all the uh, related uh, issues, such as all the approval, uh, approval tasks have to be uh, approved and validated. So whenever you got one specific, uh, one specific approval task that is not signed or being, being rejected, then your approval process, you, have, you will have to restart your approval process once again. So just once again, this is the workflow, how it looks like and how it's being connected with these blue lines. So another very important phase here that uh, this, this was one perspective uh, from, from the uh, regulatory uh, standards and also for uh, the processes implemented in CoreBeamer. I would like to show you another example for that 
and that is being implemented in the uh, software requirements tracker. And in the software requirements tracker we have implemented because this is where the uh, safety critical levels uh, comes in place. And once I go into one specific item, just to show you, uh, here we go in the uh, pressure control panel interface and once I go into a detailed view, here I see this is the very very first uh, very first uh, version of my requirement. So I haven't defined any any type, release date, or I haven't assigned it to anyone. I also I only have a brief disc description, and also who uh, created this specific item. The, if I would like to move uh, it to the defined status, I will have to click on this specific. Uh, button to run the state transition itself and I have to as you can see with the small red asterisk this is a mandatory field so I will have to define this safety uh, regulation which have to be uh, right now to be able to present it uh, precisely I will set it to uh, safety high and also assign it to myself and once I click on save right now what we are in the status draft and note here under the references, we currently have uh, no items which are associated with this specific requirement. So as we, we don't see any, any associated risk at this point. But as the, the safety, safety level is high right now, uh, I need to prove that at least I tested my, my requirement precisely and I also mitigated all the, uh, all the risks that are, uh, that are possible to occur. Uh, upon this in relation uh, to this specific requirement. So therefore I would like to click on this, uh, I would like to verify this specific uh, workflow. And once I click on this accept, uh, this is where the uh, validation comes in place. So I click on that, I see also a brief description that uh, I have to classify the safety category to uh, class A, B or C. And here uh, this workflow makes, uh, so once I save this state transition, here you see the system automatically generated uh, associated risks and also generated uh, under the references a test case which validates uh, this specific item. And once I go into the, into the state transition diagram of this specific workflow, or of these specific items, Uh, I will see that. So, for example, here in this workflow action, I see that uh, fr from the status accepted, all risks and uh, test cases have to be accepted be before I can uh, move on to the next stage of the implementation. So, I will have to, uh, I will uh, have to uh, create my mitigation plan of my risk, and also I have to test uh, my test cases pre precisely. And uh, basically, that's how it. Uh, also, I would like to show you how it's connected to the other different artifacts. So here in the middle section, you see our original workflow of our requirement. And on the right-hand side, up on this state transition, whenever the safety is high, the system will automatically generate a risk and also will automatically generate a, relating, a related test case to this. And based on that, uh, this is defined here in this uh, state transition. So once I go into the edit, where I can set up the uh, co configuration of the specific workflow. Here I have defined the different actions, and based on these actions, the system will generate me the re related artifacts. And this is pr pretty important, especially when the uh, safety is high, because uh, once I go into my software requirements, uh, I will also have to prove to the uh, auditor that I tested all my requirements. So therefore, uh, we got a view called the test coverage browser, once I go into the test coverage browser, here I expand the view, and this is where you can browse amongst your requirement and visualize whether you are tested or not. So here you see on the, in the second column, in the coverage column, that whether they've been tested and uh, if they, and also whether they've been covered by any test cases. Uh, so here you see uh, highlighted by uh, blue that whether your requirement is not covered by any test case. And even though once they covered, you, you are also able to see here the test execution. And this is a document itself that can be exported uh, to Office as well. So once I go to the uh, export Office, and I just easily create uh, able to create an Excel document out of it. 
So once I downloaded the document, this is where I can see with direct links uh, back to the tool. So on the left hand side, you see the requirements itself and so as the test cases. And also um, on the right hand side of the screen, you see the actual statuses of the requirements and also their uh, reached coverage regarding your, the test execution. And also a small tabular overview, how many uh, test cases like a coverage analysis as written here in this uh, column. So this is also one way that uh, how easily uh, you, you can export documentation out of Scorebeamer. And uh, this is basically the way to provide it to your uh, auditor. And also here in the test coverage, you are also able to visualize uh, in the tabular view the overall information of your test coverage. Another very important thing is uh, because uh, I just created a verifying risk to my, uh, to my requirement uh, a step before. So therefore, uh, I would like to go to our risk tracker. And here in this risk tracker, this is a centralized view where you can manage all your, uh, all your possible risks uh, regarding your product development. And here, once you listed all these risks, uh, you can also define a risk mitigation plan for those. So for example, I just go into this, uh, into this first uh, risk. And once I click on this, you can see here uh, amongst its properties, that based on the likelihood and the severity, the system automatically calculated the risk priority number. And based on this risk priority number, uh, your, your risk will be added to the right section of the uh, risk mitigation, risk, risk uh, matrix diagram. And so as whenever you, you are planning your risk, risk mitigation plan, uh, here under the uh, new referring items, you are able to further derive your mitigation requirements such as your system requirement or the software requirement that mitigates this specific risk. And once I go back from this view, from the uh, risk matrix diagram, I'm able to visualize all my risks uh, in the transparent view where I have an initial risk matrix. So these are the risks uh, without any mitigation plan. So once I click on uh, this risk, for example, here I see uh, this is my risk and the related uh, requirement. And also here we, we are able to define here in Curbeamer a standalone risk. Uh, and uh, currently we have no mitigation actions for that. So this will be updated whenever we define any requirement. And this also works the other way around. So once I click on this requirements user storage with the risks, I see different uh, risks here. Uh, and starting from, and these are being uh, derived from the requirements or from the user stories. And here on the right hand side, you see the risk associated with these uh, requirements. And this is for, for the project management purposes. So, so here you can manage all your risk and you can define whether they are acceptable or not. And here, once we scroll down, you also see a risk uh, matrix after the mitigation and also a combined risk matrix diagram which also works the same way as I uh, showed you before. So once you click here, you are able to see here uh, your requirements, so as the associated risks. And whenever you, for example, have to create to the auditor uh, your documentation, how you mitigated your risks. Uh, it's, right now, it's pretty complex and uh, makes, a lot, makes a lot of effort to be able to produ produce this documentation. But here, as uh, everything is, the connected in this architecture according to the standard. Once I go into the traceability browser, I'm able to uh, visualize these mitigation actions, how I mitigated my risks. So therefore, I would like to put the risks in, into its in the first column. And I would like to see, for example, all the mitigated uh, requirements from that specific risks. So here you see, uh, in the first column, I got my risks. And in the second column, I see various different type of requirements, such as software requirements, so as system requirements. And once I scroll down, this is how you can analyze your uh, risk coverage and risk mitigation. And also, you are uh, further able to elaborate this view down to the test execution. So you are also able to uh, visualize uh, validated, validating test cases to the requirements, so as uh, their test execution results. So once I go down and scroll down, I add my test runs. And here in this four-dimensional four view, you are able to uh, visualize all these in one single uh, report. 
and this report can also be exported to office so I just do this right now and the, in this way you are able to um, generate the documentation to your auditor so here in this view you see just zoom out a little bit so here we got with the, uh, with the uh, blue links you see those are referring back to the original artifacts in the system and once I go to the right, this is the documentation and all the referring items and uh, the text execution related to, related to the risks. And uh, another important uh, aspect regarding the traceability. So during the uh, presentation, during the slide, I mentioned you uh, the entire uh, lifecycle traceability from the item, item definition down to the source code, for example. And therefore, I also show you another uh, different view. For, so I would like to start from my higher level requirements, so-called the customer requirements. And I would like to visualize the entire life cycle in this coverage browser, in the traceability browser, sorry. So starting from the customer requirements, through system requirements, uh, through software requirements, and let's say I would like to see uh, the, all the bugs related associated to the uh, software requirements. And uh, for example, once I visualize all these connections, so I scroll down and I see that there are some items. Here you can see my bug is associated with the software requirements, so as to the system requirement. Once I scroll more to the up, to the right, I would like to add the source code commits as well. And here we can see on the left hand side in tabular overview we got three source code comments, source code changes. And once I sc scroll down, uh, here are those items. So for example, related to this specific bugs, I can see my source code comments. And once I click on my bug, for example, from here, uh, from this view, and I go into the source code comments, this is where I see exactly my source code comments. So once I click on these small numbers, this is where I get, went directly down to the source code where I can see my previous comments added and also highlighted by uh, red the lines that being deleted and highlighted by green the lines added in these changes. In these changes. So basically this is uh, how we support the uh, process enforcement so as a traceability and transparency in CodeDimmer and uh, this can be specified to various industries so this is this medical industry is also a very complex one, uh, but the automotive uh, automotive regulations are even more complicated. So this takes more effort uh, and also a documentation to set up the processes. But uh, using an ALM tool, it's definitely possible and helps a lot to the customers to put their uh, to to put their products uh, much faster to the market and also decrease the uh, production costs. So if you got further interest, uh, I uh, would like to jump back to my presentation because this were, these were the points that I would like to show you uh, during my uh, presentation. So I just go back and uh, if you got any questions, I would like to ask you to type them in. And also uh, I got another uh, question to you, uh, whether you would like to receive further information on Cobimer in the future. So I just opened that uh, question panel right now and uh, even though uh, so also once I close this close this uh, question panel you can also try type your questions in and I will try to answer them all and also if you are further interested you can get in touch with us on uh, sales.england.com and can find out more information on our england.com uh, website and uh, once again, I would like to invite you to our upcoming webinar, uh, What is New in CodeBeamer version 7.8, which is uh, very enhanced and uh, very, we did so much development in the, in the uh, recent few weeks. So if you're interested, uh, don't miss it. So thank you so much for your answers and also for your participation. So if you got any questions, now it's time to ask.
I will leave it, leave it open for a few, few more minutes. If no, I would like to thank you for your participation and making the time and hopefully see you at our upcoming webinars. Bye-bye.